All right, so I've posted several videos on this Qu Quiddy X Max, and for the most part, I was having pretty good luck. Uh, I'm running nylon, you know, it was warping, but it was getting better. A lot, it was really wet, so I bought a drying box, and then I started working on TPU, and I got to the point where I was getting pretty nice prints on TPU. Um, then I decided to print something that I printed hundreds of because I sell these on eBay. Is as a battery holder for Ryobi. Ryobi. Two different of the extruders. I have the original extruder, and I've also had these two failures with the high the high heat extruder. But that led to the issue of how do you unclog these jams? And it's pretty it's a pretty big issue because you have to tear the extruder completely apart to get to these. And I and I have a video that I've posted which somewhat shows you what you do, but actually you have to go deeper into these. And what I found with the high heat extruder is it's not a ho all hot end which I don't know if they claim that, but you would think if they're trying to, you know, tout this extruder head that can go up to 300 degrees that you'd want it to be all hot, uh, all metal hot end. And it's not, there's a PTF tube or whatever you want to call it, a Bowden tube inside of there. And it's, it's quite a bit of work to get these completely tore down. I'll show you one of my printers that I use for a lot of my stuff here. So at the onset of the pandemic, uh, I want to help out and and print you know face shields and all that stuff so uh, i went out and bought three of these zeal tech gear twos and they've been terrific printers all i did was i i convert them from a volcano to uh, a v6 hot end so i do have it on right now i'm going to leave it on just to keep the temperatures up so that when i get the extruder out it'll be a little easier to work with but you will you do want to have you do want to turn it off when you disconnect the ribbon cable just to be safe but What's concerning me is the amount of times that I'm having to tear this apart, and I'm really worried about damaging this uh, this ribbon cable. So right now it's jammed. If I, I I have the temperatures at 250, if I try to run the extruder, you hear it clicking. So it's jammed, definitely jammed. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start taking it apart. Like I said, I'm going to leave it on so it stays heated. Uh, let's see here. So first you gotta take this black plastic cap off. Wrong, wrong wrench. I'll try to do this quickly so I can get this in one video. I don't have enough subscribers to do longer than a 15 minute video. But anyways, I've done this quite a few times now in the last day, for the fourth or fifth time. So pull this out. Just be careful not to jack up the ribbon cable. Okay, so this is it. Now there's bolts on the bottom. I'll drop this down. There are two bolts that hold the extruder on, but there's also two that you have to take off of the fan ducting. So I guess you can kind of see it a little bit there. Right up in here, this area. So I'm gonna, like again, I'm gonna keep the heat on, just wait till the last minute to turn everything off. So I'm gonna take this one out. Like I said, I've done this, this is the fourth time I've done this in a day and it's getting to be frustrating. I kind of feel like I bought a $1,300 paperweight at this point. Shouldn't be this difficult to get a printer to print. Basic materials, not even advanced materials. The whole reason I bought this, this printer was to start printing advanced materials and I'm thinking that that was a mistake because I probably could achieve the same thing with the printers that I have already. But anyways, maybe it'll surprise me and things will change. So you have these two smaller screws. Here's like a fan tubing here. You got to pull that out. That looks like it's melted. It looks like it blows. The way it looks, it's set up, it looks like it blows right on the hot end. So maybe that's some of my problem because I did try to run cooling on my last couple prints. Maybe you just can't do that. I don't know. I think that's the whole point though. You should be able to do that without the uh, fan blowing right on the extruder. So now it's loose. I'm gonna go ahead and power the, the printer down. And we're gonna move back to the table. So I'm gonna power it down. The power is off. Squeeze the top sides of these, the ribbon cable and gently pull it out. So then the extruder comes out. Like I said, that's not a super big deal, but it's just a pain that I have to keep doing this. Here we go again for the fourth time in uh, four prints. 
So like before, when it's hot, you have to start with these two long bolts through the fan. I'm gonna kind of rush through this because I have a video posted a, a more in depth. But when we get deeper into this, I'll start showing you some of the things that I found. So this is a high temperature extruder, should be an all metal head. And maybe that's what an all metal head is. Maybe there's still a PTF tube in there. I'm not really sure, I wouldn't think so. Side, and there's two bolts here. I get those out. You actually have to pull them out or drop them off because you have to get this uh, heat sink off. Get those out of there. Pull the heat sink and the extruder off. Okay. So here we are. Jammed again. For really no particular reason that I can tell. Except it just keeps jamming. I don't know if it's hot enough to pull that out now. No, nope. so what the problem is here is I don't know if you can see that down inside here. If you don't get that out, you're done. You have to completely take this this head apart. So that requires some more tools. So you get a wrench with this. Open face closed wrench for the extruders and I have to go get a crescent wrench real quick. So basically what you need to do, and this is hot, so you gotta be careful. Um, you need to take, to get it this further apart, there's a screw right here, you gotta take that off. And that'll allow you to remove the hot end for the rest of the assembly. And this is hot. And I know, of course, I don't have gloves. I'm gonna use my shirt. Pull it off. Okay. And then from there, if I can get this a little lower. From there, you also need to take, if you have the wrench the right size, our Crescent wrench, there's some flats on the back of this inlet for the, the material. Put that on there. Take your other wrench on your uh, nozzle. And we're gonna loosen this, break it loose. This will spin off. Everything's hard to see because everything's black. So I don't really understand what's going on with this extruder. So there's the plastic tube that you would not think you would have in an all metal hot end or, or an extruder that's capable of 300 C. Maybe that's normal. I'm not an expert, but tell me what's going on with this. So I gotta pull this out if I can. So the material is jammed in there really well. Tube is clear. I'm gonna have to try to push it back out the other way. I don't know. It appears to me that maybe that's getting hot when it shouldn't be. Cause that's, that's a problem. So you can tell how it stretched because it wasn't pulling through. But why is this folded over on itself right here? I feel like I'm losing cooling on the heat break. Not sure. So then you have to reverse everything. You put this plastic tube back down in this non all metal hot end. It's still hot. Push it down. Screw this back on. Tighten it back down. I probably not to over tighten it, just get it snug. All right. So then we need to put this back on. And you can see the gouge from the screw right there. So I'll just put it back on, try to center it up the best you can 
so the nozzle is fairly straight. I push down on it too to keep it flush. It's kind of like a set screw basically locking down, clamping down on it. It's not inherently a bad design, but it's just impossible to get to it. And maybe, you know, obviously it's not normal to have this many problems. Whoops. But I am. The average person, if they had no experience, I don't know, man. It'd be pretty frustrating. You'd probably be relying on them to do everything for you. Okay. And I may be contacting them to ask them what's going on. Can you send me a new extruder? I don't know. It's probably asking a lot. So this lines up with the extruder material feeds in there. There's an outlet hole. This has got to line up. Okay, but you also have to have this in place. You got to slide that on first. Put the shorter of the bolts back in. anyways this is the harder part you got to get this all sandwiched back together which I've shown in the other video so I'll probably just cut through this so I made some slight changes to my slicer settings I turned off the fan which I believe might be cooling some things down but I still think that there's possibly an issue with heat getting up into the tube where it doesn't belong and I'm not really running extremely high temps 235 C is, is I normally run my a PETG at 250 on my other printers. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and put this back in. I'll cut to that. So basically you just take the extruder with the nozzle down, stick it in the hole right there, somewhat line it up. Then you gotta go back underneath, put all the screws back in. So you need to get the, uh, the screw that's on the same side as the fan shroud or housing. You gotta get that one started. Tighten down. Let me get my wrench here. A little hard to work with everything in here, the camera and the light and everything. Okay, so I think maybe it started. I'm not sure. Now it started. So I'll get that started. I won't completely tighten it down because you wanna make sure you can line up the other side. a little bit maybe the other holes on this side I believe that's it right there okay that's going in good so I'm just gonna tighten it snug not over tighten it okay and then you gotta get this back in there and it doesn't go in real well you gotta kind of cuz you're actually got to line up with the fan that's mounted well, it takes a little bit. That's not too bad. These are smaller. These are probably two and a half, three millimeter bolt screws. Get two of those, get those started, snug them up. Don't over tighten them because everything's plastic. The second one, I don't even know why I should, I should just leave one out because I take this thing apart so many times. But we'll put them back in. Maybe this will be the good good luck time. All right, we're gonna go back to the top. Okay, so now we got all the bolts down below, back on, everything's tight. I'm going to attach the ribbon cable carefully. Should hear it kind of push on, didn't really click. Gotta put the shroud back on. And when you're putting the shroud on, be careful not to stress the ribbon cable. It's got to fit through the slot right here. Just be careful. It goes on. The bolt from earlier is right here. A little flathead. Don't over tighten it. Everything's plastic. Just snug it up. All right, back together. I'm going to power the printer on. I'm going to preheat it, and I'm going to try to print it again. I'll let you guys know how it goes.